Hi, thank you for watching this video. So this is a second video I want to do uh, for Blender to Second Life uh, Beginner Intro uh, Part 2. Uh, in this video, we're going to explore a little bit uh, further the uh, notion of material for meshes and how this, this is related with your texture and your faces inside of uh, a prime inside of uh, Second Life. So we're going we're gonna to do that. Um, and we're going to use, just before we go further, I'm going to use the version 3.6 LTS. Uh, LTS uh, stands for Long Term Support. Uh, this is uh, from Blender Foundation. So they use, um, or they create that version uh, mostly for people like me. <laughs> they don't like to have buggy software or too, most, too, too, too many... Uh, advanced feature, I will say. Uh, I like to try the 4.1 and all the bells and whistle. It's really fun. But when it's time to produce something works, I highly recommend just to stick with the LTS because uh, this way you, you always should add the add-ons, like maybe for Second Life, there's add-on very popular, such as Avastar or Bento, Bento Buddy. Uh, they, they work way better on this version because if you try the 4.1 or the latest one sometimes the add-on doesn't work and things like that so anyway it's just my recommendation if you want to be safe use the lts version so this is what i'm going to do for for this video um okay so before we go too far i'm just going to jump in second life and i'm going to show you um just to be sure everybody's on the same page with that going to show you how uh, the mesh works in terms of uh, is texturing. So as you can see right here, we have a very basic cube uh, and having a texture, the wooden, the famous or infamous. I'm not sure if everybody like that texture, but it's there since the beginning. So this is the wooden texture. And to change it, you basically just click on that uh, and you just pick it. A texture like that so i just changed the whole texture of the block but there's also other slot like uh, bumpiness also called normal or the shine shininess or the specular um what i want to do is to highlight something i was struggling at the beginning is this idea like um when you use a prim compared to a mesh there's a big difference and the difference is with the faces so right now if i want i can by clicking on the edit link and then select face, I can browse the different faces. You can see here, like for example, the face on the top is the face number zero, the face on the front is number three, etc. So I can change, for example, the face on the front, I can change just that texture. So let's say I'm gonna go there and change this. And I can go on the side like this. There we go. So I can click on this or browse here so phase two and i can put another texture like this so this is really convenient um, but it's not uh, that intuitive to be able to reproduce that behavior from a blender made uh, from a mesh made in blender so i'm going to show you how this thing is done so let's start blender and by default there's also a cube inside of blender so we're going to export that cube as is just to uh, to show what it looks like. So if I'm going to export, call that data like this, uh, I'm going to save this in that folder using, using the cube blender default like this, export. And then you go in your second live, upload, mesh, and you just upload like that, all right? So then you get the, the form we, we have saw on the previous video. So you can see the cube itself, uh, and you just do a calculate weight and fee like this, and it's gonna calculate what is the cost of importing that mesh inside of Second Life. So, and then you click blend, upload, and it's there. So I'm, I already did it, so I don't wanna pay twice. I'm gonna just show you what it looks like. So I did the cube right here, and I just raise it. So first thing you notice is the cube is way larger from Blender. Uh, and the reason is really simple. So inside of Blender, by default, uh, the scale is 111, so they said this is it's a meter inside of um, Blender, but when you raise it inside of Second Life, it looks more like two meters, because this one is half a meter, so let's say I put it a meter too, like this, I'm just going to rescale this 111, like that, so it's not, it's not a meter, it's two, and if I look the block itself, it says two. So this is just a little thing to know. So when you import, uh, maybe maybe there's an option to change the scale during the importation or things like that. But anyway, so we can check this later maybe. But anyway, so this is, I just want to put the same, the Q to the exact same scale. Um, one little needy trick, you then copy the position like that 
and apply it to another object and just slide like this so i have both of them next to each other okay so we're talking about texture so if if i use my mesh here and i try to apply the same texture the way i did for the prim i click on texture and i just go for example i'm going to apply the heart texture the one i've picked the first one and right off the bat it's completely different as you can see so i'm just gonna scoop around so you can see this the heart we're expecting the heart being displayed on each face but it's it's not being displayed like that so this is the first thing to notice uh, i'm just gonna browse so this is the first thing to notice and the second one is if i click on the mesh and I try to do the same thing I did for the for the prime cube. I want to select a face and I browse a face and I only got an all sides option. So that means it looks like there's only one face available for the whole cube. So how do we fix that? I'm going to show you how you can adjust this inside of Blender. All right, so let's jump in Blender for that. So when I look at my cube, um, the relationship between the texture uh, from Second Life and Blender, it's related to the material. So if I click remember, there's also always two state. So right now I'm the object mode, so that's covered the whole, uh, the whole concept of the uh, object. And I can go in edit mode where it's now more in the vertices size where I can change the vertex like this. But it's not what we want to do, we just want to keep to the object level. And when we click on the object level like this, we can see like a little round ball or something like that and it's material and inside of it there's one slot this one and this is a material and we have a base color so we're gonna we're gonna change the base color for material we're gonna put it red but no change so to see the change uh, of your material you have to play with the gizmet over here so here if i click on my object and i click on this one it's show a wireframe so this can can be convenient when you when you work and you want to see the hidden uh, the hidden shape of your of your mesh. Next one is the default like um, form without any shaders or any material. And the third one is one with the material. So you can see now I see the red color. So if I click here and I want to change the color, I can change the color like that. And the third one is just the same stuff, but in this case it used like a more uh, advanced uh, render so there's a light involved so i can see you can you can change the, the the light but it's not unless you bake your mesh and your texture inside of blenders it's not something you're going to really use so i'm i more focus on this one so i know exactly what my material look like okay so now <clears throat> we have figured out how to change the color of the block how about changing the texture so to do that be sure you're in object mode click on the uh, object go to your properties here click on the material and the first material you see you can click here on the base color you click on that and then there's a new menu up here yes i know there's a lot of hidden menu inside of blender <laughs> drive me nuts sometimes and then if you click on image so two things happen so the first is the block turn black mean there's nothing associated to it so if you have a mesh a, a mesh is black that's that's something uh, there's something happening and then you get a new menu appear here a hidden menu yes <laughs> it's always like that in blender so if you open um, an, a texture so I already have the exact same texture than uh, I use in second life so I'm gonna click on the heart like this and I kind of find the texture I had inside of second life as you can see here I can I can visualize a little bit my uh, my block like that and I can see this is the same the same texture so so we got we managed to reproduce uh, the uh, the visual but how do we fix the display so let's say I want to have the the full texture on one on one face how do I how can I do this so the first thing you need to see uh, inside your mesh it's the really important part is what is the UV I did it talk much about it in the first video but this one we're going to check a little bit more uh, the uv is a very very important concept when you design a mesh so i just click on the object on edit mode and sorry i may have go jump fast so if you go on uv editing right here so that's going to create a new display by the way just as a reminder all of those tab on the top here 
they just categorize what type of task you can do. So, but it's always Blender. So there's nothing saying it just display different window. They just prearrange it for you. So in, in that case, they create the window here where you have an editor uh, type and here you have the, uh, what they call the, uh, the 3D, 3D viewport. And this one is the, uh, the UV editor. So if you want to change that, for example, you just go, you just click here. And let's say I want to see the UV editor. I click like that and then I get my EV, a UV editor like this one. And if I click back here, I go back to my 3D port. So this is one way you can also like, uh, not like that. You can click here. This is a bit kind of weird. So if you click on the corner like that, you're going to slide a new window. And then let's say you can have, I don't know, um, what can be interesting. Uh, shader editor so this is one advanced feature but you can you can create how many windows you want so but if you have an issue so go there the little cross and then you press the the button right and you slide like this and you just erase it like that all right it's a little bit weird but <laughs> it's when you know how this thing works so you're fine with that okay so i was saying so i want to see how's my uv work so if i i, I stay on this window and i press a I select all the faces of my um, of my object. So let's be sure we're on faces right now. This is the vertex. If I click here, this is the um, not the vertex, but the, this is the how do you call this again? The dot. Uh, this one is vertex. This one is edge, and this one is face. Okay, so let's go with the face. So this this one now select the face when you click, right? And you can see on the side where is this apply but the first thing you may also want to see is why my cube is gray can i see the image being applied like like i have on my layout here so yes you can do that so if you go here you just have to change the little gizmo here and tong, ta -dam, you get your image being uh, displayed on the cube properly okay so now i was telling press a to get on the um the uv shape so what what is it exactly so the uv is like you spread the all the faces on the image and that's the way you distribute your texture and it's a really really important concept and i think the cube is the one help you the most to understand how this thing works because for example i go here and i can select all the all the face by pressing a and i i press j and i start moving it you can see on my cube on my right it's moving and following my texture so I'm moving actually the UV. So if I say a G or if I do a rotation like this. So this is this is the relationship between those two things. So for example, if I click on the top here and I want to increase the visual here, I can do something like that. I select all of it, scale, and then you can see grab and then I can have a full face like that. So you see my face now is being is being distributed. So now my UV, I just changed my UV by doing this. I just pick one face and I spread it all over the place. And as you can notice, each face can overlap the other. What's really matter is what they grab on the image itself. Okay, so I can do this again. So if I go here, I can select on my face, scale like this. I can press control just to squeeze it, G, and then I get the same result. And if I want to change the side, then maybe I, I press R for rotation. And then you can see, whoops, I do a rotation like that, or maybe I want it this way. So, so there's different ways. So I can do this manually, or I can just select my cube. And there's a menu here where they have kind of preset. For example, they can do unwrap. So they just kind of unwrap the, the thing in a different way. I can do smart UV project. Uh, with uh, different stuff, so they just kind of reorganize the thing in another way. Uh, but one can one thing can do in our case is just do a cube projection. So that's mean each face is gonna be projected automatically. So that looks like more what we want, right? So this is what we're gonna keep. So we just edit our UV, and that's a very important concept. I hope it's as I've been clear for you what I did here. So the UV is really what help the image to be distributed or display on the mesh okay so since this is done now what i want to know is how can i select one face now and having a different texture on it and that's where it's a little bit um, 
weird for uh, not weird but you need to know that when you try to create different face with different uh, material uh, and relate that to second knife this is this is a little bit weird so not weird but it's just different so the material is it's the key here so basically i can have multiple material therefore i can have un almost unlimited i don't know how many material you can select but you can put a lot of material inside your mesh but for second life this is a really important thing second life have a maximum of eight face so right now my my uh, my cube have six face i can add two more face if i want like i say i have a different shape but more than eight it will not work and the thing to remember is each material actually correspond to a face for second life and we're gonna add some to see that okay so let's say i have my my material which is global for that and then how do i create one i just go there with the little plus and i press plus it create a new slot and then i press new and i get a new material so the first material is going to be let's call it uh, f2 oh, what? not f2 uh, dot zero 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 like this just to keep the convention and material one is a new material we just create and so now the question is how do i associate this material to that mesh you have to pick a vertice or a face or something for telling the material where it should be used so in order to do that you have to go in edit mode so you change the state of the of, of the object and let's say we're going to pick the front face here be sure you have selected that one if you like this and you try to do this you see this doesn't work because it selects just the point and if you do this it's just select the edge like that so what we want to do is the face so we select the face and you may notice a new menu appear yeah that behavior in blender is all over the place so if i click object mode nothing and if i go there and i click edit mode ta -da! <laughs> have a new new goddamn menu just appear <laughs> it was not there before okay so now i have this new material so i'm going to click on my material and i'm going to change the color just like i'm going to put it green like this and i want to associate this to this front face so i click on the face and then there's a button called assign so i just have to be sure i have my material slot selected and i press assign and boom i put all my face green so this is so that's mean this face is now being associated with that material let's add another one new like that that material so we're gonna put dot zero zero two the convention should be uh, updated by itself but anyway so now i'm gonna do another one i'm gonna click on the side and i'm gonna add an assignment i'm gonna assign this side with this one assign and it's now it's it's white so if i change now the color it will be changed like this i go with this guy and i change the color let's say for blue it's going to be like that therefore if i can change the color i can also change the texture and i can do all sort of things so we can do it here but it's it's going to be have to be redone also in second life so if i go there i had an image texture so you notice my face become black i go open uh here i think i picked that one there we go so now i just pick my kind of a cube texture and on this i'm going to go on the side and i use the same tricks i click on this dot image texture and now i have a new menu open and then i'm going to mushroom here and i'm going to use this uh the sphere and I have my sphere on the side so i have i have almost something similar to what i have right now in second life if you notice it's 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 really close to uh, to to it so now let's go in blender we're going to export that thing export cola data still and now this guy is going to be with the going to call Q, Q blender default tree mattress dot da so we're going to export that and when we go inside of second life upload uh, mesh uh, we just have to import that uh, new guy here <coughs> and we can we can we can calculate weight and fee there we go and there's a there's a nice thing you can do is you can click on texture and it can show you the current texture being associated with your cube so as you can see i have the exact same texture so let's i'm not sure i can upload yeah you can click and include the texture if you want uh, so that's 
that's a neat trick but i already have those textures so i'm not gonna i'm gonna i'm not gonna click on that so but if i do that it will it will import the texture but i don't want to do this um i just want to see the texture like that and there's also a uv guide what's the uv guide does i'm not sure i'm not sure <laughs> i never used that i don't know so anyway so uh what i want to do is just to go here i calculate what in fee and it's the same price and upload the the cube i'm just gonna rename it uh, cube underscore tree material like this and upload it there we go oops i did it twice i guess and then i put it there so but when i, I since i didn't pick the material i'm gonna add it manually so the first thing i will do is to change the scale because i want to fit the other one like this also i'm gonna copy the position like that paste and slide it on the left and now let's see what's going on if i change the texture of this guy now if i click here press that and i just pick my heart first thing yeah it works so we have now the texture being displayed all over the cube and now we need to find if we have faces so if we click on it uh, and we click edit link select face we have link number zero and then we click once appear phase zero which is new the other one didn't do that so we have phase zero and then we have phase one so where is phase one right there so if we have phase one we can change and having the circle i think it was this one great and then we can go to phase two where's my phase two i guess it's on the other side yeah okay phase two is here so we're gonna change that texture and we're gonna put the square like that so we almost get the exact same thing but not totally but anyway we were really close really close so that's mean this guy now I have three face and I, I think that's what i want to demonstrate to you is the ability to have multiple face on your mesh so and now it's possible all right so this is this is like a very um i will say weird things to learn at the beginning so this is the relationship between your object uh, your mesh and your material and be able to make a relationship inside of second life for the different texture uh, one thing to know you cannot go more than eight text eight material so that's mean your maximum number of uh, face individual face by mesh is eight so this is something you have to uh, to consider all right so this is okay i will say this is the first part so i'm going to do another part a little bit later for um for the uh, mushroom and we're going to explore the other part of the uh of the texture which is the ability to change the bumpiness so like uh, having some some shape and stuff like that i don't think we can see it much uh, if i do this like yeah bricks or maybe gravel yeah you can see a little bit of the effect if i get close like that bark so you can see uh the bumpiness or the shiny so if i put high you can see now this is all different so so we're gonna learn how to do those kind of texture unfortunately uh i'm not gonna do this inside of blender and the reason is because it's it's complicated <laughs> It's really not easy. I prefer to use Substance Painter for that, uh, this guy. So, but unfortunately, this is a paid version software where Blender is free. So I feel kind of, I feel sad for some people. They don't want to spend money for that and they still want to have uh, some texture. So I know Blender offered that, but uh, it's a very advanced topic. Uh, it's I, I didn't find a nice way to explain that but we can we're gonna we're gonna try substance painter and maybe another video later 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 on i'm gonna try to do the same with blender but uh, the next video will be to take this mushroom and use substance painter import everything and fix everything inside of blender and be able finally to export that to second life all right thank you